Guys, I made a meme. Look at that. So for those of you who don't know, the Founder's Blazing Mouse Immune has identical stats to the Vindertech Slicer and the Stormblade. Uh, the only difference being is that the perks are a little bit better for the Mouse Immune. So let me explain. We've got crit rating, crit damage, you know, crit rating, crit damage, but you can't have any kind of attack speed. You can only do damage. And then on this bottom perk, it's pretty standard where you have the matching six perks, miss monsters, etc. So that is identical to the Vindertech Slicer as well. You can see here, I'll just do a quick little pass over where these are pretty standard perks for like AR and, you know, most melees in the base game. So the Vindertek Slicer and the Stormblade are truly identical, whereas the Boss Immune has a lot more to talk about, hence why it is our topic of discussion today. As you can see, you can actually have attack speed crit and crit damage, which is quite rare for a lot of swords, and it is usually what sets swords apart when they become some of the top dogs in this game. The Ravager can have crit rating, crit damage, attack speed. The Spectral Blade can have attack speed, crit and crit damage. And the Spectral Blade alongside the Boss Immune can have multiple attack speed perks, which wouldn't have excited me long ago, but thanks to Choo Choo, we were able to take this in-game, compare the attack speed, and figure out which one was actually better. No, I'm just kidding. We actually did some real math. So he went as far as to make a DPS calculator, which is really, really useful. So he broke down a lot of math in general. We put a lot of effort into this, just trying to figure out which one was better. And while well, we made this tool for you guys, so you can actually plug in the exact values of your own swords and see for yourself which one is actually better. So in my case, I'm doing 28,093.1 damage with my uh, with my Mas Immune. As you can see, I copied this information straight off my sheet dps here and i like that the damage perk is included here because it goes right into the sheet dps and once that's all factored in i put in the 0.4 swing speed compared to the 0.265 swing speed you get from a triple attack speed one which is very very fast and then i put in this extra crit chance because i'm using whiteout fiona in my support now i was very specific about making sure that this uh, entire thing was paleo luna only so the only extra math that this thing is doing is factoring in the extra damage you would get from paleo luna given the amount of health you have because remember she gives you nine percent extra damage based on your total so 110,000 is the break point. That is where it would have been better to just run a normal crit build. If you drop below that amount of health, then Paleo Luna won't actually be better. But assuming you have maximum health, you'll be about 23.5% more damage if you're just using triple attack speed in Paleo Luna. And then as you can see, the less health you have, the closer and closer it gets to that break even point. So just be wary of your health and making sure that it's always maxed out. I highly recommend coconuts, campfires, and healing pads are things that exist. Survivalist will help a lot. Life Leech will help a lot. And those tools will definitely keep you up to that point. Now, you can plug in any value. You can use the Storm King's Ravager. You can use literally any sword in the entire game. This is a melee calculator, so you can't really use this for ranged weapons because Paleo Luna only affects melees, but regardless, you can still use this and make a copy of it. I'll link it below and you can figure out what is best for you. Now, with all of that said, I do tend to recommend the best perks for an all-around build. This shouldn't be contingent on Paleo Luna. I just wanted to mention all of that because it was really interesting and actually applies to a lot of melees. That all aside, let's talk about the Boss Mune itself before we get into some of the more specific perk options. Now, just like many of the Founder's weapons, it does have a very interesting 6 perk, where every 6 hits, it'll trigger an explosion, dealing 106% of the weapon damage in a half tile radius, which means every 6 shots, you'll basically explode outwards and damage everything around you, which is really cool that that actually chains between multiple enemies, meaning it's 6 hits on anything, it's not on the same target. So, as you're slicing through a crowd, you'll be doing lots of extra area of effect damage, which is really, really nice to have, especially considering you're using a melee weapon, which kind of needs as much area of effect damage as it can get. And I think that's a really cool perk for a sword to have, and it makes it much more useful in crowd clearing. Other than that, it's basically just a really cool melee. It feels like you're using a lightsaber. It even kind of looks like it, but there's not much else to say. It's a really decently swinging sword that does really decent damage and has an interesting six perk to boot, which makes it very, very fun to use. And for those of you who are lucky enough to have the addition of Fortnite that allowed you to actually get the Masumine when they upgraded recently, then congratulations. You have a cool weapon for the rest of you. Hopefully you can enjoy the rest of this video. But for now, let's talk about the best perks for this thing. So as you can see, I'm running a typical crit build. Um, that's pretty standard in general. Obviously, like I mentioned, you can go triple attack speed if you're using Paleo Luna. That won't actually be all that bad, and if anything, it'll trigger the six hits a lot faster. So you can do that, but I won't be doing that personally, at least not right away. It's just interesting to me that that is kind of viable. And as I said, if you're using Whiteout Fiona on the support, then it's nice to have a crit damage down here, but of course, it's not an option on the Mas Immune, unlike the Ravager. So in this case, you're going to have to go for, I suppose, a damage perk if you want to maximize your damage output. Of course, there are lots of options here. You can use Life Leech if that's something that you prefer for your build. Movement speed is always nice just to get around more. Again, if you're using this with Paleo Luna in the lead, then you're not really going to need that 30% damage perk because all of your damage is going to be coming from her. So that's also an interesting point. A few people have actually criticized me for using Paleo Luna and a lot of my melee builds, but I honestly don't think it's that big of a deal because I can tell when a weapon is good or bad regardless of how much extra damage I'm getting from Paleo Luna. I understand that the melee weapons I use will look a lot better and perform a lot better because a lot of my damage is coming from her, but suffice it to say, if I say a melee weapon is 
is good or bad, it doesn't really matter what loadout you're using. I typically go off the numbers of the weapon itself, not the loadout that I'm using. Now that that's aside, my typical perk recommendations kind of stand the same. Like if you don't want to trust crits, that's okay. Double damage is not going to be that bad. Uh, you can go for that and it'll work very, very well. Obviously, crit rating crit damage is something I opted for. With Wedo Fiona in the support, my crit chance is over 50%. So if more than half of your shots are critting, it actually makes sense to go for a crit build because the common argument I have always had against crit damage is that it's not as consistent. You know, only half of my shots are going to be hitting for extra damage. But that used to be a better argument when it was like 38% of your shots, which is very true for a lot of ARs and faster firing weapons. But for a sword, you're hitting a lot of enemies and you can usually hit multiple enemies at once. So you're going to be critting all the time and there will always be a follow-up attack to, to save you. So I didn't have any trouble running crits on this, but if you're somebody who loves consistency, you can obviously go double damage. Now, if you really like totally rocking out, which would be a super viable build for this, I would keep the attack speed perk and then go double crit damage because a lot of your crit rating is going to come from Whiteout Fiona and or totally rocking out, which is especially relevant because the rad heroes have just come back to the game and Dennis Jr. is no doubt close to follow. He's unannounced, but when he does come around, inevitably, that'll be a really nice perk to have if you want to use totally rocking out. That functions very well with melee weapons. As for the attack speed perk down here, I highly recommend it. I feel like you do require an attack speed perk somewhere because 0.4 seconds isn't even that insanely fast. It's pretty decent in terms of sword sing speed, but personally speaking, I feel like 0.4 is about as slow as a sword can swing before I have to kind of stop using it because melees are limited by their swing speed. So you basically want that to be as fast as possible to an extent. Like I said, general all around DPS requires you to have some form of damaging perks to actually be effective in battle. Obviously, Paleo Luna lets you cheat that rule a little bit, but I do think at least one attack speed perk is highly recommended. Of course, you are limited to fire, which is something I was going to mention earlier with the Stormblade and the Vintradex Slicer. Both of these are locked to energy, but because their perks are so radically different, it's not really an apples to apples comparison, so it didn't really matter at the time. And with all that said, that's pretty much it. I don't think the heavy attack is anything worth specking into, so with the perks that I have here, I'm very happy with it. Triple attack speed can work as well. Double crit damage if you know what you're doing, and double damage up here if you don't like crit rating. I think damage is the only perk that makes sense down here, as I mentioned. Of course, you can go movement speed if you don't think you need that damage, which might be a viable way to go, and it'll get you around the map nice and quick. If you want to support the channel, feel free to use code MYST at your checkout. Become a channel member here if you want to go ahead and support me even further. Open up your free upgrade llamas if you're watching this as I'm recording this, which pretty much only applies to the NSA. Other than that, thank you guys so much for watching and uh, have a nice day. <laughs> and then